where I would like to welcome everyone. This is the 11th EC Beijing on Things to Come online seminar. It's a seminar series that we've started last year in September, and it aims at introducing uh, ongoing and future space missions to uh, the general public and specifically to the scientific community. We have today invited Professor Gabriele Cremonese, from Italy, from ENAF in Italy, to give a talk about the Bepi Colombo mission. It, it is actually the second talk about the Bepi Colombo mission in our series because we had one a couple of weeks ago with Dr. Johannes Benkhoff. And today, Professor Cremonese will talk about symbiosis, which is the spectrometer and imagers for MPO Bepi Colombo integrated observatory system. Um, you can see in the webcam, apart from Professor Cremonese, that I would like to thank for accepting the invitation. Also, the uh, executive director of EC Beijing, Professor Wing Wen Yip. I'm going to say a couple of words, a couple of sentences about EC Beijing, and then we can maybe start with the seminar and introduction uh, to the talk by Professor Yip. Uh, so, about EC Beijing, it was established in 2013. It's the International Space Science Center, uh, Space Science Institute, uh, located in Beijing. Again, it was funded in 2013. 2013, thanks to the agreement between the National Space Science Center of the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the uh, International Space Science Institute in Bern, Switzerland. And since then, <coughs> sorry, uh, EC Beijing has organized plenty of activities. Uh, we have workshops given the epidemic. We had to stop our online events, but we still have uh, offline, uh, sorry, online events, we have to stop the offline ones. And uh, um, as you can see, we have this online series of uh, seminars uh, called the On Things to Come, but we also have a series in Chinese called uh, 1001 Space Nights, uh, which aims to introduce the achievements and uh, the research of outstanding women scientists from China. So without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Professor Yip, who can tell you a couple of words more about our guest speaker today. And again, thank you, Professor Cremonese, for being here here and thank you everyone for attending the webinar. Yeah, thank you, Lola. So I would just want to say a couple of words uh, to introduce uh, uh, Professor Gabele Kemanese. Um, Gabele, he graduated from uh, University of Padua and then he stayed there for, you know, until now. And he's now a, a senior uh, engineer technologist at the Astronomical Observatory of Padua. And over the years, he built up a, a very you know, uh, impressive career. And he's currently, as you can uh, see that he will be uh, talking about this uh, imaging experiment on BB Colombo. Uh, he's the PI of the camera experiment. Uh, besides uh, the BB Colombo, he has been uh, involved in a number of um, very important ESA missions, um, including this, uh, including he, he, he is a co-PI, of the stereo camera on SOMAS, the Trace Gas Ob um, Observatory Observer, and then also the um, um, uh, on the camera experiment Janus on the Juice mission to to Jupiter. Uh, he himself is an expert uh, on on comets, um, exosphere, planetary atmospheres, planetary surface, and small bodies, uh, in particular interplanetary dust. And I want to say uh, also that uh, Mercury is a, a very difficult place to go because uh, from the from the energy point of view, the energy requirement to go, get to Mercury is even more stringent than going to Jupiter. So that's why it's very important, you know, a mission for Bill Colombo. Uh, Kamanisa, please, uh, it's yours time. Thank you. Thank you, Wing. Thanks for the invitation. I'm very glad to give the presentation today. And good morning or good afternoon, depending where you are following the seminar. And today I'm going to describe symbiosis that is uh, one of the instruments on board the Bepi Colombo mission. Here you can see a wonderful picture taken during the, the launch that was uh, on 20 October 2018 from Kourou, French Guyana. But uh, a big instrument needs uh, a big team. Here you can see the top level organization of the team that is uh, uh, Italian and French uh, colleagues uh, sharing their responsibility and the scientific team 
of the instrument. And uh, okay, here you can see the full team, the co-investigators and the associates that uh, represent uh, 12 different countries from Europe, China and USA. So here you can see a picture of the, the instrument that is composed by three optical heads. It is, uh, to my knowledge, uh, the first time that uh, what, three optical heads, three remote sensing instruments are under the responsibility of one scientific team. Uh, here you can see we have the stereo camera that will provide the global mapping of Mercury. And then uh, there is the, the visible uh, near infrared spectrometer, Viki, that will provide the global mapping uh, in the spectroscopic uh, method, uh, the, the, the entire planet. And then, and finally, the high resolution camera that uh, all the three channels compose a symbiosis that I'm going to describe better in details. So, as uh, already Wing uh, mentioned, uh, uh, to explore Mercury is very difficult because it's very close to the, to the Sun, is the closest planet to the Sun, and so the environment is very harsh. The radiation, the temperature, the thermal heat uh, radiating from the surface of the planet. So, uh, it means that uh, we had to, uh, we had, uh, to think about uh, the different drivers uh, uh, on the design due to the resources that were very limited for all the instruments on board the spacecraft in terms of mass, volume and power. It means, so we, we thought a different solution. For instance, here you can see we have a unique main electronics uh, uh, managing the three channels. Then. Uh, we uh, adopted the structure in carbon fibers in order to be more light. Then uh, we have a stereo imaging ch sharing one detector, two uh, different channels converging on the single detector to provide a stereo pair. Then uh, we, uh, we used some patented uh, manufacturing method and machine in order to realize few items of the instrument. And, uh, and so, uh, of course, uh, the detector has been very important because of uh, the limiting, limiting mass and power means that we were not able to implement uh, a cryo cooler, for instance, for the infrared visible, uh, infrared spectral range. So, uh, but the, the design drivers uh, were also uh, due to the environment that, that is very, uh, difficult uh, because the temperature. So we had to adopt a different solution for the baffle, the external baffles of the three channels. Then the detectors is based on technology, on new technologies sometimes, and for all the, the optics and the materials uh, for the mechanical parts, we adopt a radar uh, solutions. And uh, um, even the, uh, the, the shock proof uh, was very important for the mechanical design because of the launch. And, and so the rejection of the infrared light in order to reduce the heat entering this instrument and so entering the spacecraft. So, but uh, which, uh, which are the main advantages to have three instruments uh, uh, under the responsibility of uh, one team. From a systemic approach uh, uh, at the design level, it, is, it was very important because, of course, uh, managing three instruments at the same time means to optimize the performances and the capabilities of the entire instrument. Then uh, also the power control, the mass and power control uh, was uh, at systemic level in order to optimize, in order to reduce the, the mass, uh, the connection between the different uh, instruments uh, and sharing some elements. And of course, the thermal control was very important uh, to uh, follow at a uh, unified level. But uh, these are from the uh, systemic approach, but also on science, of course, uh, there are plenty of uh, advantages that uh, are clear now and uh, will be very important when uh, we'll be around uh, Mercury. And because the calibration of the three channels had been performed altogether uh, at channel level in the Italian uh, 
prime, but then a system level in the French Institute. And so the cross calibration, the co-alignment of the three channels is the very important, of course, when we have to put together the data. And so the co-registration of the data fusion is at the base of our uh, design and will be the basic, uh, the basic uh, um, way to forward, to go on uh, on the analysis of the data. And of course, it's very important because we can plan the three channels all together. One team that uh, plan the, the three remote sensing instruments observing the surface. So, which are the main principle of operation? And symbiosis will provide the global coverage of the entire planet, and then there will be the observation of selected targets. The spectrometer and the stereo camera will provide the global coverage of the planet in the first six months of the nominal mission. It means as soon as possible. And uh, instead of uh, the high resolution camera that due to the limit of the data volume can provide the coverage of selected regions, uh, it means that it is a target oriented instrument. After the performing the global coverage, the, even the spectrometer and the stereo camera will uh, observe selected target at higher resolution, spatial and spectral resolutions. It's important to say, to underline that, is, that there is a, a full flexibility of symbiosis because uh, all the three channels can work at the same time in parallel on any target. And, uh, and then important to underline also that 50% of the data volume of the TAR mission is allocated to symbiosis. It means 750 gigabits per year that uh, are mostly uh, compressed by a factor seven. So just uh, uh, let me make a rough comparison in order to underline the, the new technology uh, of symbiosis. The, the, here you can see a rough comparison of uh, symbiosis that is composed by three instruments for a mass of 13 kilos. The imaging system that was on board the Rosetta spacecraft, uh, composed by two cameras, had, had a mass of 27 kilos, where the high spatial resolution was very similar to the high resolution camera of Symbiosis. And then the stereo camera and the super resolution camera on board Mars Express, still working, had a mass, has a mass of 21 kilos. Here you can have an idea about the miniaturization that we have to design to think about uh, for symbiosis. Then uh, I like to describe uh, some technologies, new technologies uh, uh, designed and implemented uh, on symbiosis. The first one is the main in electronics because uh, there is one uh, electronics uh, controlling all the three channels. And then of course, uh, there is a cold redundancy. Here you can see here, Every channel has a specific compression module and on each compression module, there is a compression software working and based on wavelet. It means that uh, we can compress every data spectrum or image from lossless up to 64, a factor 64. Another important technology uh, are the detectors that uh, have been realized specifically for, uh, for us, for our instrument, by the Raytheon, an important US, US company in California. And of course, uh, for symbiosis, we could not use uh, mechanism as, uh, as a filter wheel or cryo cooler on shutter. It means that the detector and the package of the detector have to include all the different uh, features that we need for an imager. Here you can have an idea because here you can see the, the window, the sapphire window, where we deposited the coatings for the filters. Then there is the chip, and then there is the tech, the thermal electric cooler, that is the active cooler for uh, included in the packages of the detector, the focal plane assembly. Here you can have better uh, see of uh, the, the detector, the focal plane assembly. Here there is the window where we deposited the six filters, in this case, for the stereo camera. 
uh, the safe file windows is embedded in the package and then mounted on top of the chip. And under the chip, there is the tech. The detector is based for the two cameras, is based on the CMOS because we need a snapshot method to uh, observe, to take images. There is no shutter, no moving parts. And uh, it's important to underline that we have 100% field factor of uh, the pixel uh, uh, for the two cameras. It means to have the best MTF, the best performances of the detector uh, coupled with the optical design. Here you can have, uh, you can see a picture of mounting the detector on the high resolution camera and uh, mounting the window with the filters and then the tech and so to have the final product that will be mounted on the camera, on the mechanical part of the camera. But uh, I like to underline uh, just uh, one slide because the, the spare model of the detector of the cameras, the symbiosis camera, is uh, at the moment mounted on the stereo camera Cassis that is orbiting around Mars on ExoMars TGO. It means that uh, Cassis has the same detector of symbiosis and uh, is uh, using the same push frame stereo acquisition and uh, we will do on Mercury. So uh, this is the third detector realized by the Raytheon for us and for the spectrometer. This is another important te new technology because on the same detector we co can cover the visible and the near infrared spectrolimeter up to two microns. Here you can see the, the mechanical unit just in the Raytheon in the USA and here the mechanical the package ready to be mounted on the spectrometer in Leonardo, the Italian prime. But uh, another technology, new technology, has been implemented and used for our instrument. In this case, you can see the, the uh, stereo camera optical design. The light is coming from the left, and here you can see the four mirrors that uh, have been manufactured directly on the aluminium piece using a single point diamond machine patented by Leonardo. It means that uh, the four mirrors have been realized on the aluminium piece where uh, we apply the optical uh, accuracy. And of course, it's important for the stereo camera where we have to, uh, the co-registration, the two channels providing the stereo pair is very important for have a good uh, performance, a good digital terrain model generation. Then uh, another important uh, technology, co completely new, was uh, adopted for the external before of the high resolution camera. Uh, yes, because the high resolution camera has a large aperture, it means that uh, we have a large amount of heat entering in the spacecraft in the instrument and we have to avoid this problem. So the external baffle has been realized as according to a specific uh, a design called the Stavrudis, the same design applied to the laser altimeter on BepiColombo, Bela. It means that the baffle is not round, but is composed by different sections, ellipsoids and circular hyperboloids. And uh, this is uh, this to satisfy very uh, strict uh, thermal constraints. And between the baffle and the optical design and the instrument, there is a filter and uh, an infrared rejection filter. It means that the infrared light has been, uh, will be reflected toward the uh, outside it will not enter the instrument and so the spacecraft, but will enter only the visible light that is important for our images. Here you can see uh, the baffle before mounting at the spacecraft. Okay, and then uh, after having described the main new technologies designed and, and implemented on Symbiosis, I like to describe, uh, to show a few more details about the different channels. Here you can see the optical design of the high-resolution camera that is based on the Ricci-Cretien. 
And then there is a lens corrector just in front of the detector in order to correct the chromatic aberration. The aperture is 90 millimeters and the focal length is 800 millimeters. Here is the organization of the focal plane. As, uh, as I said before, the, the coatings have been deposited just on top of the sapphire window, shielding the chip, shielding the detector. Here there are the four filters deposited on this uh, window. The the, 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 there is a panchromatic filter covering most of the visible spectral range that will be used to take most of, uh, of the images. Then there are three broadband filters in order to get color images of the surface. Here is just a simulation of what uh, HRC can provide on the surface of Mercury because, of course, uh, it, uh, this image is just a mosaic. Is the composition of more images collected during one or more orbits around the planet. Okay, but uh, a new technology, new concept has been implemented just for the stereo camera because the limited resources in terms of volume and mass pushed to have, it, to have a new design. So we, we implemented the original optical design of the stereo camera then uh, the stereo camera is composed by two sub-channels sharing the detector and most of the op optical elements. The stereo angle is 40 degrees and the stereo acquisition is based on the push frame that is quite new. Here you can see a sketch, a comparison between STC of Symbiosis and other uh, terrestrial and planetary stereo cameras at the moment working. So, uh, the few characteristics uh, about uh, uh, the stereo camera that will provide a global mapping stereo mode, it means that uh, we will we'll generate the digital terrain model of the entire surface of Mercury with a uh, vertical accuracy uh, better than 120 meters. And uh, the best uh, pixel scale is just the perierm that will be 60 meters per pixel. Okay, here you can see uh, the detector, uh, the focal plane of the stereo camera, the two channels, and uh, uh, even every channel has a panchromatic filter that is just uh, the panchromatic filters will be used to acquire the stereo pair, and uh, they are large frame. This is the reason why we call the push frame, because every panchromatic has an extension of 835 pixels cross track and 384 pixels uh, along track. Here on the left, you can see the first stereo pair that we acquired, acquired in laboratory on the anorthosite sample because we had to perform a stereo validation of the stereo camera before the optical calibration in order to uh, validate the new stereo concept. And here I like to show you, uh, if it's possible. No. Okay. okay. Uh, in this video, you can have a look of the optical bench of the stereo camera and the diff different optical elements. And uh, of course, uh, you, uh, I have also a 3D video uh, as this one, but uh, it's not possible to show you in the monitor. Here you can see the light is coming on the left, the four mirror realized on the, the specific aluminum pieces. Then uh, there are the, the sharing uh, doublets, uh, the folding mirror, and just on top, uh, other lenses and the, the, the focal plate. Okay, and, oh, sorry. and here you can see, uh, no, not, uh, okay, uh, here you can see how it works the push, push frame, how the stereo camera will acquire the stereo pairs, just a simulation of the orbit around Mercury. On the right, you can see the two channels acquiring the surface and one 
channel will observe the region and after that the other channels will observe the same region. Here you can see a sketch of the stereo camera observing strategy. Uh, STC will work only in this specific range of two anomaly around the aphelium because uh, when the Mercury will be at the aphelium, the spacecraft will, be, will have the periherm just on top of the subsolar sub hemisphere. And uh, in the first phase of the mission, uh, there will be the stereo mapping phase that will provide a global coverage of the planet. Then there will be the color mapping phase. It means that uh, the stereo camera will, pro we will observe selected targets with the four broadband filters. Okay, here you can see a sketch of the spectrometer, but uh, I like to underline that here you can see on the left here the spectrometer and here the stereo camera because they are sharing the same carbon fiber structure. So uh, the global mapping that we will provide of Mercury uh, may have, will have a resolution of 480 uh, meters, but of course uh, we can observe selected target at highest resolution, that is 120. It means that there will be a binning factor applied for the global mapping because of the data volume uh, problem, limitation for all the instruments. This is the spectral range from 0.4 to 2 microns and the 6 nanometers is the spectral sampling, sampling of, the space, of the instrument. Here you can see the mechanical design that is very complex, but here uh, there is a strong heritage of Italy and France for realizing uh, this kind of spectrometers because similar spectrometers are just aware on symbiosis and uh, is going to be realized for Jewish and so on. Here you can see the ca internal calibration unit because uh, here uh, we have an infrared spectrometer and we need to calibrate and just inside the, this calibration unit there is the only moving part of symbiosis that is a shutter, a two la uh, lamps in order to uh, take uh, a comparison lamps and uh, to calibrate the uh, spectrometer every time that we need. And important to uh, under, uh, underline also that the, te the operative temperature of the spectrometers is 220K, that is uh, quite high, uh, assuming that uh, is a spec infrared spectrometer, but it's important to underline that uh, the detectors have been realized uh, just for our instrument and in the case of uh, the cameras we will work at room temperature more or less at about uh, zero the centigrade, centigrade but uh, in the case of uh, the spectrometer is just uh, minus 23 degrees centigrade. Okay and here you can have a look at uh, the facility in Orsay, Institut Astrophysique Spatial, nearby Paris, where we perform the, the calibration system level. Most of these devices and boxes have been realized as just for symbiosis, a large tank where there, is, there was an exopod and on top of the exopod was mounted symbiosis. Okay, and uh, as you know, Messenger uh, completed his mission six years ago after four years around Mercury. And the NASA mission, of course, uh, provided the first global coverage of the planet uh, and with several uh, discoveries on new regions, new features observed on Mercury. But of course, uh, this new discovery, these new uh, regions raised uh, new questions for on the planet origin and the evolution of the surface. So, so I can summarize the main scientific objectives in these four points. Uh, the global contraction of the planet, uh, the composition variability of the surface, the nature of the olives, and then the study of the ice deposits, deposits that we have in the polar regions. But just to make, uh, to speak in details about uh, 
uh, the scientific topics, uh, what are the, the hollows? I think that is the most intriguing discovery made by Messenger on the Mercury surface. These are small and bright uh, features that mainly uh, found observed inside on the impact craters. And uh, an hypothesis is that uh, it are related to the release of volatiles in, uh, after the pyroclastic events, or after the impact, or any other mechanisms that uh, we don't know. And uh, it's important to, uh, to see also the distribution. It's clear that the distribution of the olives, uh, according to the messenger data, is biased because uh, uh, there are uh, no observation in the southern region, at least with the resolution enough to observe, to discover uh, the olives. And uh, maybe there is also a bias also in the northern hemisphere. Because, of course, uh, we are talking about uh, small features that sometimes are tens of meters, ten or hundreds of meters, and we need high resolution to discover and to study. So, uh, what uh, can we do with symbiosis? Uh, we can determine, we can study the composition of the olives, because MESA didn't provide the composition of any olives. So, it's, uh, it's very important to understand the composition in order to understand if uh, uh, there, is, there are volatiles uh, related to these features. And this will be possible in the global mapping and then in some cases with higher spatial resolution for selected targets. And uh, of course, uh, the high resolution uh, camera can provide images of new olives or many olives uh, in this spectral range of the pixel scale. And uh, a new discovery of the discovery of new olives, of course, uh, will improve the statistics distribution because, of course, uh, we can observe uh, olives at any latitude of the planet. Another important uh, scientific objective here the, is the water ice. It's clear that there is not direct measurement of water ice on the surface of Mercury, but there are two and direct uh, measurement of hypotheses about the presence of water ice. The first one coming from the radar observation from Earth, because I like to remind you that uh, on Mercury, as for the Moon, in the polar region, there are craters having the wall permanently in shadow. And so in these shadow regions, we may have water ice, as uh, is uh, underlined here in this radar data. But also the laser altimeter on board the messenger provides a few interesting measurements inside the craters, the shadow regions in the craters, and uh, um, just uh, pushing uh, the hypothesis that uh, uh, this reflectance, uh, the reflectance of few regions is due to the, the present water ice. What we can do with symbiosis? Uh, the spectral range of, v of Vicky is important because in the infrared part of the range, there are four diagnostic absorption bands, a typical a specific of water ice already observed on the moon. And so uh, then the spatial resolution of 200 meters per pixel is sufficient to resolve the ice spatial distribution in the penumbra regions. Yes, because according to our model, and uh, you can see in this uh, paper led by Filacchione, we uh, realized that this, there are also the penumbra uh, regions uh, nearby the sh permanently shadow regions where there is a, some light and that can, can be observed, by, can be detected by the spectrometer. So, uh, and of course, uh, for each uh, region where we think to have a water ice or we found water ice with the spectrometer, we can provide context high resolution images and DTM uh, of this water ice region. So, just to make a comparison between the messenger data and coverage of the surface and what uh, symbiosis can do. And here you can see the distribution of the high resolution images uh, with the pixel scale uh, lower than 12 meters per pixel. And uh, only 2% of the surface has been observed with this resolution in the northern hemisphere. 
Symbiosis uh, will cover 20% of the entire surface at any, any latitude in the first year of nominal mission in this pixel scale region. Here is the coverage at higher uh, as, uh, worse res spatial resolution for the global mapping. Uh, you can see the observation of messenger in the pixel scale range between 50 and 120 meters. Uh, messenger covered 62% of the surface, and uh, but uh, there are no uh, good images of the southern polar region. And uh, STC or symbiosis will cover 100% in this pixel scale range and in stereo mode. And what about the DTM? The DTM provided by Messenger is, is, can be summarized here. Uh, in, on top of this box, you can see the DTM provided by the laser altimeter in the northern hemisphere with a vertical accuracy of 665 meters and the global uh, multi-aim multi image DTM is uh, shown here, provided by USGS using all the images acquired by Messenger. For fuel quadrangles, uh, there is a better DTM and uh, performed by the German colleagues uh, using the images. And of course, uh, the stereo camera of Symbiosis will provide the global DTM with accuracy better than 120 meters. What about the spectrometer? The spectrometer on board Messenger was a point spectrometer with a pixel size of few times of a uh, few kilometers. And the spectral range was between 0.3 and 1.45 microns with the signal-to-noise ratio very low in the infrared part. For Vicky, it is uh, different because it is the imaging spectrometer will, pro uh, it will provide a cube uh, data, cubic data, with the uh, spatial resolution much better, and the spectral range is larger in the infrared part, with the expected signal-to-noise ratio very high, greater than 100 at all, when length. So uh, in, uh, the symbiosis team started to work uh, on the target list in order to be prepared uh, which target we can observe, with, uh, which is the configuration of the instrument, the geometric configuration of the spacecraft in order to better observe the target. We already have a preliminary list of 400 targets because uh, the scientific team of symbiosis is divided in different working groups depending from the scientific uh, objective. And each working group defined, uh, suggested uh, some targets according to science tar drivers. But of course, uh, we have to apply uh, the geometric uh, limit that we may have uh, at specific day uh, around the planet and also the feasibility in terms of operation. And uh, here you can see the six different categories of uh, the targets. This is just uh, a, the preliminary target list. Other targets will be added in the next uh, few years. And then uh, we uh, apply the ranking to the target uh, depending from what we already know about the specific feature and dot what we would like to have, for instance, higher spatial resolution, better illumination condition, or maybe uh, there is something that we cannot define in the messenger images and we need a very high spatial resolution. And so the composition, of course. And in order to uh, prepare to uh, understand the performances of the instrument, we realize a simulator uh, in this simulator, we, the simulator will be applied to the targets, of course, in order to understand which are the better geometrical uh, configuration in terms of incident, emission angles and phases. It means uh, two anomalies, when to observe the target, uh, uh, depending from where the planet is with respect to the sun and where the spacecraft is uh, 
are orbiting around the planet. And uh, the simulator will provide an estimate of the integration time and the repetition time that are crucial for the science observing strategy. For the three channels, it's clear that uh, the simulator is able to work on, on the three channels, uh, on the single channel of the three channels together, because uh, for each target, uh, a scientific team may ask for observing on with one or three channels, depending from the, the objective. And uh, included in the simulator, there is a radiometric model, and that, of course, uh, include the characteristics of the optics uh, and then the characteristics of the detector. The reflectance models included in the radiometric model is based on the APCA parameters, and of course, uh, uh, that is, are based on the images and a few uh, uh, nice papers of the messenger team. And uh, according to these parameters, and according to our reflectance models, we can make the hypothesis about the grain size and the porosity of the regions that we are going to observe. Here you can see, of course, that is important and the, uh, the, the illumination angle, not only for the observation of the target, but for instance, also to uh, acquire the stereo pair. I didn't mention, I forgot to mention that uh, the digital terrain model will be provided by the stereo camera, but uh, for few selected regions, there will be high resolution DTM because we may use the high resolution camera to acquire st uh, stereo pair and so to have uh, a much better DTM in terms of resolution. This is possible only for few targets because in the case of the high resolution camera, we have to ask to the, uh, the spacecraft to tilt in order to have a stereo angle between the two images. So in conclusion, in conclusion, I can say that uh, we developed and uh, we implemented uh, several new technologies for symbiosis in order to uh, to be uh, within the constraints imposed by the mission, imposed by the environment where the mission will work in terms of radiation, thermal problem, optical, and so uh, different solutions for the detector, for the optical elements, and so on. And uh, the integration of the three channels uh, has been very demanding, and uh, it will be very important uh, to, uh, to have uh, a sense of fusion and uh, an observing strategy common for all the three channels. Thanks for your attention. Yeah. Uh, come on, Lisa. Come on, Lisa. Yeah. Thank you very Thank you so much, much. Uh, for this Thank very you very much. Talk. Exactly. Um, so, any questions yeah. from the audience? Yes, so this is the time when you can ask your questions. So the people who are on Big Marker, you can text your, your question in the chat box. For the ones on Bilibili, uh, you can write the question in, on Bilibili in the chat box and then I will take care of them. The first question is, what are the advantages of EpiColombo over Messenger? But okay, uh, if you mean uh, the Bepi Colombo mission and not only the symbiosis, I think that uh, uh, Bepi Colombo is composed by two modules. Uh, two modules because one specific for the surface, the internal structure of the planet, and another one specific for the magnetosphere and the exosphere and the environment. And of course, uh, it means that we have 16 instruments on the two modules working and observing the planet. And uh, most of the instruments have uh, much higher resolution in terms of uh, surface co coverage, uh, particle analysis, uh, and so on, uh, better than Messenger. And, uh, it, and then uh, you have to take into account that Messenger had an orbit uh, tilted, uh, was uh, very different from the orbit that we left Bepi Colombo. And of course, uh, Messenger was able to uh, observe better the northern hemisphere and very uh, little the southern hemisphere. That is not the same for BepiColombo because the orbit of BepiColombo is symmetric and all the instrument and also symbiosis can observe at any latitude at the same time. Okay. 
Thank you very much. We have a second question. Um, how would your experiment study Mercury's exosphere? So uh, uh, our instrument can provide a few uh, details on the composition. And of course, uh, if uh, the observation of the surface composition together with the, the, the measurements of the exosphere put together, can uh, correlate uh, the exosphere observation with the surface composition of the specific regions. Another possibility that uh, I will have to take into account is just to tilt the spacecraft to observe the limb, for instance, with the spectrometer, in order to get uh, high resolution spectroscopy just in the visible, for instance, for the sodium emission, just uh, on top of uh, the surface. Thank you very much. I see there is a comment by Professor Roger Maurice Bonnet. Uh, he was the director of science at uh, ESA when the mission was included in the Horizon 2000 program. So, and he says that you can see he's very impressed by the instrument, very powerful, very ambitious. Thank you very much. But by the way, uh, something that I mentioned sometimes during the the seminars, the webinars. If you want the ones on Big Market, I can also turn on your microphone if you want to to interact uh, directly with uh, Professor Cremonese. Uh, just text in the chat box that you would like to talk and I can turn it on. Uh, of course, feel free if you want to ask a question and just type it right, it, that's also okay. We have um, a third question. How can mercury contain volatile material? It's a question related to hollows. Uh, I think that is uh, one of the big mysteries uh, raised by messenger because uh, we know there are the hollows, but we don't know nothing about the composition. And uh, very few information on the composition and so on the possibility to have uh, some mineral uh, releasing volatiles was due to putting together the images collected at different filters of the camera. And so, uh, as you can imagine, uh, with very low spectral resolution. And I think that uh, without knowing the composition is very difficult to answer to this question. Okay, thank you very much. Um, question number four, could your imaging experiment search near sun asteroids? Oh, this is something quite difficult. I mean, and of course, uh, if I ask to search for asteroids, it means that uh, uh, the space, the MPO is the nadir point in spacecraft. It means that all the instruments are looking at nadir, at the surface. If uh, I will ask to search for asteroids, I have to tilt the spacecraft 90 degrees, and I don't think that the other instrument will agree on doing that. And uh, so I think that uh, could be very difficult. Okay, thank you very much. I see no new incoming questions. Uh, we still have five, 10 minutes. So if uh, anyone wants to ask a question, uh, feel free to do it now. Professor Ip. Uh, yeah, yeah I, just, I just want to mention that, you know, it's very, very nice that uh, the Gabriel, uh, uh, could give such a detailed description of instrument that would be very informative uh, for the people who are building uh, camera instrument uh, or the new technologies. And uh, even though you have not mentioned that much about uh, the scientific objectives, you know, measurements, but I think that's already served the, the purpose. And I, I believe that the, uh, this uh, uh, talk will be archived and you could find it on, on, the, on the ISBJ uh, web page later on. So I, I believe that there will be, will be a look at many times by, by people who are building instruments. And, uh, the, and uh, uh, the, the mission will be, uh, BB Colombo will be, will be arriving at the Mercury at uh, 2025, is it? Yes, in December 2025, mm -hmm. and uh, we will start the commissioning at the beginning of 2026. So, uh, uh, Regarding the scientific objectives or synthesis, I would say that uh, is any objectives that you may have for a surface of a planet, because uh, we will provide from high resolution camera to 3D image to spectra of any uh, feature on the surface of the planet. And I think that is very important uh, that uh, there, will be, there will be a common observing strategy 
for the three remote sensing instruments. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, there's also a, a something connected with the horrors, you know, about the, that you talk about the possibility of emission of, of volatile materials. And I, 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 I think I read that um, uh, Messenger found that this, the surface composition of mercury uh, might be indicating that uh, the composition might be more volatile than you know, we have believed. Since the one thing about interesting about mercury is it has a very large iron core, right? And that, that so that uh, how you're going to you know uh, look further into this question. Uh, yes, yes. I, I think that uh, this is something very interesting because uh, the messenger data uh, allow to understand that uh, there there has been recent activity on the surface of mercury and uh, maybe uh, under the surface. And the volatiles that we think that is uh, uh, one of the sources of the olives uh, could be uh, uh, maybe real released by quite recently for some processes working under the surface. We cannot uh, uh, rule out uh, the presence of a reservoir just under the surface that uh, at the moment, the moment we don't know and uh, we don't have any data th that uh, can uh, uh, confirm this hypothesis. Symbiosis should be able to do it because of course the composition and the very high resolution yeah. together with the 3D information, the morphology of the olives uh, should allow to understand better what, uh, which, is, which was the origin of the olives and uh, what there is under, underneath the surface, underneath the olives. And uh, I see that the Michelle, Michelle has a question. Yeah, yes. I see. Yes, I can see. Uh, thanks, Michelle. Uh, so, yes, I think that uh, some signature of the space weathering should be possible because uh, uh, looking at the, the variation of the composition and the albedo of some features, uh, maybe due to the, uh, the work of the space weather in the million of years. And uh, then uh, uh, it's clear that uh, we have to put together uh, the different uh, geologic processes working on it and what was due to the sp uh, space weathering. But for instance, uh, the spectrometer will be able to uh, better determine the iron abundance, uh, that, uh, the carbon abundance that we have on the surface, and that may be a signature of space weather working. Thank you very much. Um, any further questions? In the meanwhile, I would like to thank you uh, very much, Professor Cremonese, once again for the excellent presentation and remind everyone that this is the second uh, seminar of our series on Bepi Colombo. The third one will be on April the 7th. Um, no, I'm wrong, on the 24th of March, apologies. Uh, and it will be held by Professor Go Murakami from JAXA. It will be on one of the two spacecraft of uh, Bepi Colombo, the MIO, a spin stabilized spacecraft designed to investigate Mercury's space environment. So um, again, March 24th, um, same time, 4 p.m. Beijing time, it's 9 a.m. in Europe, more or less. And I see it. Thank you very much, Professor Gabriele, also from the from the audience. Yeah, so, if, so uh, yes, if there are no further questions, I would like to thank you once again and thank the audience. And uh, uh, have a nice weekend and see you uh, on the 24th. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.